Anyway, welcome to the session. And uh, we talk about the JavaScript API for multi-dimensional image services. Uh, my name is Hong. I am a product engineer uh, at Team Raster. And here with me, probably you'll know him already. He's Wen Xuan. We work on the same team. He now, his role now is a software, uh, pro, pro, uh, software developer. Um, so, okay, so, so what is uh, multidimensional? Uh, uh, so today we'll talk about uh, the multidimensional data model and how you can take your multidimensional data and publish as multidimensional image services. And then uh, once you will go over with you the JavaScript API for multidimensional image services, we prepared uh, some samples to show the typical web applications that you can build out of the JavaScript API and the multidimensional image services. So we mentioned a lot of multidimensional, multidimensional. So what is multidimensional Rust data here? We know now uh, the capture weather data every hours every 15 minutes, very frequently. And NASA also has many uh, Earth synchronized satellites that take, uh, take um, scientific data in the same area uh, and uh, of the same area um, at very frequent interval. So these type of data not only have X, Y dimension that GIS care about, and also it has time and the vertical dimension like ocean data, like weather data. So we call this type of data as multidimensional data. And in this particular session, we are more focused on uh, raster, multidimensional raster data. This type of data are normally stored in NetCF, GRIP, and HDF formats. And uh, uh, operational data are normally made available in HDF, but uh, uh, NCDF, the grip data, normally um, the model data and the simulation data, they are st stored at these formats. These formats have very interesting uh, common char characteristic is that they store multiple measurements in one file. By measurements, uh, we also call variables. So each variable could contain multiple dimensions which could span um, like uh, it could contains like hundred thousand of uh, uh, slices we call it, and it, it, so it could span multiple dimensions. And uh, this type of data can, could easily like one collection uh, could easily contains many many files. So to serve those type of data as services, we have a common a unified data model to work with this type of data. And this data model is built based on the Mosaic data set. If you are new to the Mosaic data set, this is a, a Rust data model that manage, categor, uh, manage the, categorize the, the collection of images. It manage uh, the, as a table in the geo database. And in, term, uh, in terms of multidimensional data, we provide three Rust type to work with this type of data, which is the NCDF Rust type, HDF, and the GRIP Rust type. So this Rust type, we use this Rust type when we ingest data into Mosaic data set, we extract the metadata information from those files. By metadata information, I mean those variables and the dimension values. We populate these values as tables in the geo database. So each row in the geo database is corresponding to conceptually a slice in a cube. And physically, it references a 2D array on disk in a file. To create this type of uh, model is straightforward. We have two GP tools to use. First, you create a mosaic data set, which basically is a holder, empty mosaic data set. Then you use add raster tools to add the data that you work with to mosaic data set. And when you add data, you specify in the 
in the Rust type of properties, you can say what variables I'm going to work with, or you can choose one or multiple to ingest to the mosaic data set. The data can aggregate, can, you can add multiple variables to the mosaic data set. You can add date multiple variables from multiple files. So it kind of serve a purpose of aggregate your data. And this multi-dimensional mosaic data set is unified, is a, um, is a unified solution uh, to all the formats, to all the multi-dimensional formats. And then this fits nicely into the ArcGIS framework. So uh, you can use the layer and uh, the, the time slice, uh, time render, and the range render, and will work with this type of data. And we also have a specific render to visualize a particular uh, type of data for, for scientific data. And because it's a, a data model within ArcGIS framework, so we can publish this type of service as image service. And besides the common feature that image service has, like visualization, dynamic, dynamic processing, like uh, transfer data with uh, look compression, and so on, right? Support multiple clients. This multi-dimensional image service has a multi-dimensional info from the rest and the point, it advertises this multi-dimensional info so that the client can communicate with their service, perform dimension query. If it is a, a you can publish as WCS, WMS, and it also support a standard uh, OGC query like time and, uh, and, and elevation. So now I have, uh, I'm going to do a demo, a simple demo, first demo to show how you can take your multidimensional data and publish as an image service. Okay, this is a, a pro project. And um, the input data I'm going to use is a NCOM uh, NAN CDF file. This actually data set has many files to uh, just uh, to save time, I use one uh, one uh, input, and here is I prepare a GP model that links the operation together. So here is the create mosaic data set, and I give the name, a uh, projection, and then add the data. And here is the Rust type. You, as you can see, it automatically uh, gave you the list of the variables, and you can choose which variables. In this case, I choose uh, temperature. And this is basically set of property, rendering property. So then I can go ahead and run to create a multi-dimensional mosaic data set. At the Rust, GP2 support multiple uh, parallel processing. Um, in this case, it's a uh, one image. It is, has uh, about 1,000 slices, but for if you have many uh, files, and this uh, parallel processing can really boot your uh, performance. Now it is created. Oh. Let's refresh. Oh, that's the mosaic data that I created. And you can see that uh, I can open the product page, and you see the multi-dimensional information here that tells you it has one variable, and this variable has time dimension, and it has a vertical dimension. And by default, it display one of the slides. Uh, it's, uh, we can, uh, okay, we can enable the range slider, use the depth as the field, and then, uh, this is a, this is the sea uh, sea um, ocean temperature. This is at the sea surface, and uh, we can define the, the range. You can animate right as you go deep. It become uh, temperature become low. 
this interval is not regular, so some interval doesn't have data, it's no data. Okay, so let's stop. Let's go to the surface, and then uh, you can use time slider as well. You know, anim can animate the time. Okay, so this is the data model creation, right? So we can publish this data model as a service in a portal, share as a service. I actually have a service that published to save the time that. Uh, I have published this ocean temperature mosaic data that I had created ahead of time. Where is my, oh here. Yeah. Okay, this is the portal. This is my portal, my, my content, and then this is the item. Let me open this uh, in my web map. And the same, because it has multi-dimensional info, so automatically the dimension, uh, vertical dimension slider is available, and then the time slider is also available for this service. And if you want to do a little bit further exploration, you can see. Just one second. It looks like the screen is cut off. No, I, I only use one file. Not that a screen is an ocean projector. It's somewhere. Some issue? Yeah, it doesn't show the balance of the screen. Can you quickly check the ocean? Oh. It is right. So check, check this. It is that. Yeah. Right, it doesn't show the other, <laughs> the vertical slider. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead. Oh, I, 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 I make this smaller. Yeah, probably this. And uh, Chrome. Yeah, okay, so. <laughs> That is the vertical slider, and that's the time slider. So if you want to do some some more exploration, you can turn off the slider, for example, and then bring up the multi-dimensional filter. You can get uh, the temperature at certain elevation or something like that. And if you, you can take a look at the rest endpoint of this uh, service, it has um, um, the resources. Uh, one of those is multidimensional info. This is the rest endpoint. It gives you the time. Oh, no. This is the time. And then it gives you uh, the vertical uh, dimension and values. OK, so now. It is the second part of the talk, yours. So thanks, Hong. Uh, now let's look into different web, different types of web applications we can build with ArcGIS JavaScript API for multi-dimensional image services. So there are three patterns we are going to show today. The first one is going to use the GS API to explore multi-dimensional data. The second type we are going to show is to leverage server-side raster functions and the processing template to perform server-side multi-dimensional data computing and analysis. So the third web type of web application we are going to show today is actually multi-dimensional data visualization for vector field data. This type of data usually rep represent the magnitude and direction of uh, uh, wind force or ocean current data. So let's look into the first one. Um, the ja uh, multi-dimensional data exploration using JavaScript API. So uh, JavaScript API in 3x, we have three different type of layers that you can use to work with uh, multi-dimensional data. The legacy layer, which is ArcGIS image service layer, it supports old browsers such as IE8 
that you have IE8 uh, uh, by default on Windows 7 operating system uh, and all the newer browsers as well. So it's capable to handle uh, server-side processing and rendering and dynamic mosaicing, pick a particular slice from a, 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 the multi-dimensional image service and show that a particular slice. It's not able to perform client-side rendering and processing because the implementation-wise is actually based on the image element of HTML uh, um, spec where there's no much room you can do other than put a source tag over there. So the Rust layer is a newer layer we introduced two years ago to really replace ArcGIS image layer if you can run your if you want to run your application on modern browsers. So it works on Edge, Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Opera browsers, WebKit browsers, etc. It runs on IE 11. Uh, it doesn't really work in IE 10. So by using Canvas element in HTML5, it enables the client to perform some client-side pixel filtering and processing and rendering, which in many cases are very important for scientific data. So there is also ArcGIS image service vector layer available there. It's used specifically for vector field data to represent two-band data for magnitude, direction, or U and V component. So we also support OGC standard for this multi-dimensional data. We support WMS and we also support WCS. So these layers are available in JavaScript API as well. Uh, we don't yet have WCS API in 4X, but you can use it in 3X APIs. So um, to work with the multi-dimensional image service, first we need to specify the parameters we want the email service to draw us, such as the server-side processing, the mosaic rule to define which slice we use, and the format. If we only need server-side processing, we can use JPEG format or JPEG PNG. So we can use either ArcGIS email service layer to achieve this goal, or we can also use the newer Rust layer if you application, you don't need to support the legacy IE browsers. But if you use Rust layer, you have advantages because you can actually request Rust format in different, uh, uh, in different format, such as the source data in LERC format. LERC stands for Limited Error Rust Compression. It's invented by Esri, but we recently open sourced it on GitHub. In that GitHub repo, we provide the C API for you to encode your data into LERC format and decode the LERC data. We also provide a standalone JavaScript decoder in that repo. So this LERC decoder capability in JavaScript is encapsulated into this Rust layer. So Rust layer will handle all the plumbing work. It requests the data in LERC format and hand over to the client developers in a concept called pixel data. So this pixel data essentially has two components, is the pixel extent and the pixel block. The pixel extent cr corresponds to the pixel block, which is typically the current uh, map extent. So this pixel block has a width, height, that represent how many rows and columns. It also has a pixel array. If you have a three band, you will have a three band array. If it's one band, it's one band array. It also has a mask array, which means if you have a mask array, it will tell you which pixel is, trans is, is really invalid or which pixel is valid. So as a, a JavaScript developer, if we want to take advantage of this capability, the only thing we really need to write and worry about is really write a pixel filter. It's just a regular JavaScript function which take the pixel data by reference and uh, process the data, then feedback, feedback to the uh, rendering pipeline. So one important uh, method on this different type of layer is called get multidimensional info. Uh, the uh, REST multidimensional info resource that Hong demonstrated to you uh, just a few minutes ago is available through this method. It returns a deferred or promise. When it's fulfilled, you will get the multidimensional info object, which will let you know 
how many variables available and how many dimensions available for each variable. To work with that, we typically need to do slicing and dicing, pick different slices or group them or, or, uh, in this multi-dimensional space. So we use this class called dimensional definition. It actually takes three important properties. One is you define which variable you want to use. The second property is define which dimension you want to use. The third one is you define which value you want to use. You could use one value, or you could use a range of values, um, like extent kind of thing. Then this dimensional definition is essentially it's one mosaic service. The image is a, a dynamically mosaic, so you pass down this multi, you can put multiple dimensional definitions together in an array and assign it to a mosaic rule. Then call the layer to set the mosaic rule. Essentially, you instruct the server to draw or process a particular slice, a group of slices. So there are some widgets in ArcGIS GIS API you can use to work with this data. Um, uh, it, what is available in ArcGIS Online, just as Hong demonstrated to you, is also available to you as a developer as part of a GIS API, the time slider and the multi-dimensional slider. The multi-dimensional slider focuses on other dimensions, dimensions other than time, such as uh, Z, or like uh, uh, depth or elevation. It has a two layout mode. You can lay out uh, vertically or horizontally. Then there is uh, OGC layers we have. We have a WCS layer, WMS layer. WMS layer has been around for quite a while. WCS layer was introduced last year, currently in beta. Uh, we, uh, so it's essentially after we implement the Rust layer, we uh, have the framework to do client-side pixel decoding and rendering. So we leveraged the same technology we implemented uh, uh, for, by following WCS protocol. So WCS connection gives you the capability to connect to the server to describe the coverages, formats, interpolations, versions, etc. WCS layer is the layer you use really to construct uh, the uh, layer for a particular coverage or particular version. These parameters are optional. If you don't specify version, it will use the highest version it supports. So WCS, the latest standard is WCS 2.0.1. We this JavaScript layer fully support 2.0.1. We implement the core uh, specification and some service extensions. Uh, we use the KVP, Kvalu pair, and we work with XML because over there coverage is the GML coverage is in XML. But um, we support it nicely through this WCS layer. And because we decode this uh, WCS coverage, usually we request in TIFF format, right? We decode it on client side, so all the pixel filters you build for Rust layer can work with the WCS as well. So let's see a couple of demonstrations for that. So this, the first example, is actually from a JavaScript SDK. This example is available in 3x and also available in 4x SDK. So quite often when we work with multi-dimensional data, we it's multi-dimensional. We work with sliders. It could be time slider, could be a vertical slider for the vertical uh, dimensions, or it could be pixel value slider because we, want, we are interested in a particular range of pixel values. Well, this example actually shows you a customized slider to uh, show a particular elevation, a uh, particular seat temperature range, and visualize them on the uh, map. It's client-side pixel filtering, so there's really no round trip to server. We can do that because we request data in lurk format from a server, and we render it on client-side. So essentially, the business logic right here is we use this, uh, let me turn off the output. We use this Rust layer. Uh, use this Rust layer class. So we construct a dimensional definition to request a particular slice for this variable, it's water temperature. And because it has two dimensions, so we need to construct two dimensional definitions, one for the Z dimension, one for the 
time dimension. So that in this x, y, t, z dimensional space, we request a particular slice. So we put this as part of the mosaic rule. So when we construct the rust layer, we provide these parameters as the input. Because we, by default, the rust layer requires data in lurk format, so it's the client developer's responsibility to configure and uh, pixel filter. In this case, the raw data is floating point, so we want to visualize that. So we have a, a pixel filter here. This pixel filter does two jobs. One job is really to visualize that, assign user color ramp to visualize it better. Another job is actually to perform this uh, client side pixel filter, uh, uh, pixel value uh, range filtering that corresponds to the slider event. So every time we use the slider, we filter this dynamically. You can see when it loop through these pixel values, the first thing, the first thing it check is the slider range, right? Then if it's invalid, it will flip the mask. If it's valid, then it goes to colorize it. Finally, it will assign this back to the pixel block, then render it. So I have the same demo available on client side. Uh, in this demo, I copy the exact code, but actually I modify this code a little bit. So I provided the extra piece. So I get this uh, multi-dimensional slider from the GIC API. So let's show this slider first. So I initialize the layer that invoke this multi-dimensional widget once the layer is ready, then bind this to the map. This widget is capable to harvest all the Z dimensions uh, for all the layers on this map. And you can animate through different uh, uh, Z dimension. You can also go back to a particular slice. One nice feature of this slider is it's capable to handle the sparse data. So for time, we really have a pretty regular interval for multi-dimensional data, but that's not the case for Z. You're, you probably have more sensors when it's close to the ocean surface, but only very few sensors when it's approaching the ocean flow. So this one is capable to listen to the multi-dimensional info and only give you the slices that are available. Sli this slide also uh, has some building in nice features to handle the latency. It's able to prefetch two slices so that when you play it, you can have a, a pretty nice and smooth user experience. So the code behind this is uh, really pretty simple. So I create a new multi-dimensional slider. I bind this to the current map. So I specify this particular dimension. If there are multiple dimensions, like you could have a Z dimension, elevation dimension, you could have a pressure dimension or some other dimensions. You can specify which dimension you want it to listen to. Then it will be able to drive the map. So when it animates through these different dimensions, you have the data on client side, you can actually work with this value slider simultaneously. So this is uh, another example, but the sliders were built differently. Uh, so when pe people in the multi-dimensional uh, data world, they quite frequently use uh, uh, like D3 or third-party libraries to visualize. We can actually use D3 to build the sliders. So it's different look and feeling for customized applications. So one nice feature of this application is I can actually drill down for a particular point we give in the x, y dimension, I can actually explore the other two dimensions and profile it along the time dimension, this one, or profile it along the z dimension. So this is done through by requesting the image service goes to the identify, using the identify request. So the identify request goes to server. Server will retain all the catalog items and their corresponding pixel values in an array. Then on client side, I can actually visualize it using a profile or using any charting tool that you want to work with. So the algorithm that we have 
the compression algorithm we have, uh, as I said before, is available on GitHub. This is a repo, github slash esri slash lurk. You can find some nice documentation about how it works. One very nice thing about this uh, uh, compression algorithm is it's very suitable for scientific data, because typically there's multi-dimensional data floating point. Uh, and for this categorical data, such as land cover, there's a uh, thematic data, um, it also provides lossless compression. So for floating point, you have a control of the accuracy and precision. So I would like to show you one example about WCS as well. So this is also a multi-dimensional email service on sample server six. We have a WCS enabled. So we can access this using email service using Rust layers. We can also access this using WCS layer. So let me show you the uh, network request. So if I pan the map, you can see it's actually using the WCS protocol. It's a service, it's WCS, it's making get coverage request uh, using the uh, WCS standard for spread reference, CIS, EPS, G code, etc. So in the code, I also have the same pixel filter to colorize the thematic data I have. In this case, it's really the land cover categories. Once data is available on client side, I can leverage this dynamic pixel filtering, such as I want to show the uh, evergreen broadleaf forest only. So we do have a support for OGC users using the OGC protocols. Um, that's the end of this section. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Is it get caught? No, right? Okay. A so, bit, yeah. a little bit. So, okay. So, this section we talk about um, multi dimensional computing. Uh, we know that a very important feature for image services, multi dimensional image services, besides uh, visualization, is computing. And um, this section we particularly talk about the on demand computing using RAS function. A RAS function is basically an algorithm that takes input and output pixels. And this RAS function is designed to, to output pixels, to produce <coughs> pixels in the output based on the, the neighborhood pixels from input. So this uh, piecewise dynamic approach uh, has the capability of uh, on-demand uh, processing. And it only processes the pixels based on the request. Say if you zoom into an area of interest, it only processes the pixels within that area of interest and within that resolution. It does not process pixels outside of the, of the area of interest. And also it doesn't write, doesn't have to write pixels on disk. We support, ArcGIS support many out, out of, many Rust functions out of the box. And, uh, and these functions can be chained together if you say if the output of one function can be an input of another function. And uh, also you can save the function as a template, uh, rft.xml as a, a template. But more often because you work in a certain area, right? So more often you will find uh, the existing function cannot be fully described the algorithm that you want to achieve. But we have a way that we provide a framework allows you to create your own Rust function using, uh, using Python. And we have a GitHub place that there are many examples and documentation that you can uh, check out. And there's also a session tomorrow uh, specifically talk about uh, Python Rust function. In terms of applying a Rust function, Rust function on Mosaic dataset, there are two ways. So you can apply the function template to process each row, every row, to press uh, every row. And you can also um, apply the function to, uh, to process group by groups. So I'll explain more about how do you apply the 
uh, rest function on, glu on groups. Say so this mosaic data set, this is the footprint table. And this mosaic data set needs to have two fields. Uh, one is a tag field, or you can call it other name. One is the field that store the variable names, and another field that define the groups. And the good thing is that when you create multi-dimensional mosaic data set, the Rust type automatically populate the two groups, the, the two fields. So uh, in this case, this is a concept I'm going to use in the demo. So in this case, this mosaic data set has a temperature variable and also has a mean that calculate from the temperature uh, variable. And then I added them together. And also, the Rust function template needs to have, uh, first, of course, when you define the function, the input needs to match the variable name in the mosaic data set. Another thing is that you define the properties of the function to uh, have the tag field and the group field. So when applied on mosaic, it will process group by groups. To, once you have a Rust function template to define it on the, to set it on the mosaic data set, basically you can use the context menu. Uh, there's a bring up the processing template pane, and you can import template. And here is in the desktop you can, uh, you can process, you can uh, uh, request the processing template. And uh, from uh, JavaScript API, it is also very straightforward. You create a Rust function class, and if you have defined the Rust function template, basically pass the name of the template. And you set the layer using the set rendering rule method. If you use the built-in Rust function, and you specify uh, the, the, the parameters using the uh, the, um, using the argument method. OK, so I have prepared two demos. And basically, it is uh, how you create the, uh, the model. So first is uh, NDFD data, uh, weather data. And it, this data uh, read. Um, Publish data every three every day and three hour uh, three day forecast. It is stored in H, stored in grid format. So here is the mosaic data that I had created, and from uh, using three variables. There are many variables. I'm particularly interested in these three variables. This is the 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 uh, this is the, what, the humidity. This is the temperature. This is the wind speed. So you can see that's the information about this variable. And um, to define the processing template, we can use this uh, manage processing template pane. By default, each variable is a, is a template. But you can add your own processing template, create your own processing template. And uh, say you uh, add a function. Here we have like uh, uh, some functions that work with your scientific data like heat index function. You can add this function, and you define the properties of this function. And I actually have saved some processing template, and I can uh, import directly here. So let's just import. So it's get import here. And um, let's just take one, take a look at one of function. This is a weather, a five weather forecast function. It's a bit, you know standard uh, GS analysis uh, uh, function, right? So we look at three variables: um, heat, uh, what is temperature, wind speed, and the, and the humidity. When these uh, numbers, when you have, uh, uh, when the heat is bigger. Uh, when it's bigger or high temperature or low humidity, you get this is the bad weather for, 
for for fire, right? So we kind of uh, remap. We do remap. We do uh, remap and give the score, and then we uh, add the score together, and then we visualize using uh, Rust uh, unique value render. So uh, let's uh, add this uh, mosaic into map and uh, bring up the. This is the where you uh, can. Uh, access the processing template. So by default, it's the temperature, and you can look at uh, this the relative humidity, and then this is the um, the heat index, and then this is the weather forecast and uh, fire weather um, warning app. Mm, it should show up. Okay, so that's it. And it's not just one data, it uh, has, uh, it's multidimensional. So um, you can uh, compute this on the fly. The second time will be faster. So let's um, look at it. I think they. The time interval might mess up. Yeah, it is uh, six hours. Yeah, so anyway, so you get the point. And uh, I, I can publish this as service, image services. And uh, for this particular one, I had um, made a very simple uh, web application using JavaScript. And I call each template, temperature, uh, humidity, and then um, this is the wind chill function. And, um, and again, I see, let me see whether I can do uh, dynamic refresh. There are some weirdness. Okay, so so the second time will be faster. So yeah, so this is the oh I need to show a code a little bit, right? Okay, so you know there are many uh, you know you set up the layers and and so on. So the major part of this is that is this based on the buttons and you define the Rust function. You call the corresponding Rust function template. For example, this is the uh, wind speed, this is the heat index, and this is the weather forecast. So once you construct this fun Rust function uh, class and you define it on the layers using set rendering tool. Another example is the uh, is the anomaly that. Um, this is, is a uh, this, the data model is com uh, is constructed constructed from SST data, sea surface temperature. So what I did, I this is a, uh, has the monthly temperature of thirty five years. So I add all the data into Mosaic data set, and I made twelve groups. Each group is a month, and then I calculate using Python Rust function aggregate function to calculate. The the mean of each month. And then I add this mean rasters back into the mosaic data set, regroup so that each month and each year is a group. And then I did the math to calculate anomaly. So this is the temperature then, and I have uh, the mean and I have the anomaly uh, function. So. So you see, this is the anomaly function. It doesn't seem to have uh, much uh, difference, but as you, as it's close to uh, 1982 uh, September, you see there's anomaly uh, detected from here. I think this is the anomial, uh, yeah, effect. So, yeah. So 
much work has been done in constructing the data and uh, figure out, uh, configure the processing template, less computing. So now, uh, what is it? Okay. The next part of uh, the next part we're talking about the visualization part. There are there are uh, certain uh, scientific phenomena which can only be described by two variables. One is the magnitude, one is the direction, like wind, like ocean current, right? So to work with this type of data, and uh, when you create the data model, we have we provide a template called a vector field template. So when you ingest the data into Mosaic dataset, you use uh, uh, this, uh, bring up this Rust type page, and then you set the processing template to be vector field. And also you define the properties for the variable, so which is u, which is v, which is magnitude, which is uh, direction. And once you create, and in the client, we can visualize this using vector field render. So the, the, way, the, the way to visualize this is that we, we divide uh, into small tiles, and for this, the size of tile, uh, the tile size can be adjusted by user. So, and then we calculate the average magnitude, average direction from the pixels within each tile. And then we use this number to decide the size of the symbol and the, the, the rotation of the symbol. So this is how the vector field render works. And then we have, we provide a few for existing symbols to use. And in terms of JavaScript API, we have this image service vector layer, and you define the vector field render and set on layer. So once you has some examples to show you, Thanks, Hong. So uh, I'll show you two example applications uh, that visualize uh, vector field data. So the first case is uh, a service available on Sample Server 6. Actually, Sample Server 6, we have a dedicated folder for scientific data. There are examples from uh, Modius, uh, land product, or from NDFD data, etc. For there's a uh, representative cases for different type of scientific data that we support. So this NDFD1 data, we can visualize them using uh, this vector ArcGIS image service vector layer. It's multi-dimensional, it has uh, the time slice, so we can actually go to different time to see the uh, wind magnitude and wind direction uh, at that particular time. So the data, is available through email service. The, this particular ArcGIS email service layer actually requests data in LERC format. Then uh, convert it into points, actually using the graphics, the graphic vector rendering pipeline to render it using different uh, uh, symbologies like uh, simple arrows or wind bulbs, etc. And another feature of this application is because it's multi-dimensional, I can actually drill down for any particular point to get all the available dim all the available pixel values in all different dimensions and then visualize them. For people who work with wind, we typically don't really use a profile. We typically use a rules plot to uh, show the frequency uh, so, uh, of the uh, statistics, right? show the frequency of the wind. So the code behind this is actually pretty simple. So to request a particular slice, we again use this uh, dimensional definition. We request for this uh, particular variable called magnitude direction vector variable, and request for a particular time. We put this as part of the multi mosaic rules multi-dimensional definition. Then when we create this ArcGIS image service layer, we can pass down these parameters. So compared to other image service layers, we need to specify extra things, such as how do we want to visualize it, because now they are vectors. 
So you can pick the single arrow, or build fault wind, or wind bulbs, etc. Then you, you want to specify how you want to tile them. Like uh, you can have like one arrow per 50 by 50 pixels, etc. You can also configure the size info using the standard approach, uh, just like you visualize uh, points or feature layers, and define this uh, a customized vector field render, provide these customer parameters, and set the render to the vector layer. So whenever I put a point on this map, I actually send two types of requests. The first required request is actually query to find out all the slices available at this location. Then I send them in batches. I can have two threads send it concurrently to the server so that I can have some uh, progressive feedback. So when all the data are available, then I can plot them using a customized uh, rules plot. So the second example I'm going to show you is actually, you probably have seen some examples in the scientific data community. For any particular slice, you can use uh, static arrows or you can use this particle flow kind of strategy to visualize the uh, wind data movement. So there's uh, this example, there's also one on uh, Azure GitHub, it's WindJS. So one nice thing we can do with the email service is we can actually use email service as a data provider to these community examples, such as in this particular case, I'm using a Rust layer. Or email, uh, you can do this using either Rust layer or email service vector layer, because in this case, we use the layer as a provider. So we request the raw data using our JS API in a log format. We decode the data in pixels. Then we convert our pixel block into the corresponding uh, data format that are supported by these community uh, uh, models. So it's multi-dimensional. So we can request a different slice from the server and see how it behaves over there. So the code behind this is really uh, based on that GitHub repo. But instead of uh, requesting, uh, that GitHub repo actually requests static data in JSON format, which is pretty big, right? JSON, there's no compression uh, at all, it's floating point data. But right here, I'm actually using, uh, requesting a particular slice, multi-dimensional definition, I'm using a Rust layer. So in this Rust layer, in the constructor, I actually, I disable the drawing. See, the draw mode is false, and I don't want listen to map time change. I want to explicit the control because I'm using this Rust layer as a mechanism to fetch the data and convert the data. So there's a Rust class we can use to actually read the source data. So the response we have is actually, uh, the response is actually the pixel data uh, uh, decoded already because the Rust layer itself handles the decoding. Then I convert it into the, a format supported by this uh, uh, WindJS. It's actually uh, pretty interesting. So you put all the pixels into these two different components. So the first component is your component, then you need to generate the corresponding headers. These headers, they have a special format for that community-based uh, model, but we can convert this by leveraging the email service, the information available on the email service. Uh, putting this all together, then we have this nice demo. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. So that's um, the content we uh, planned to present. And uh, this is, so um, there are some additional uh, references that you can check out. And one is the JavaScript API examples. And another is that we have actually some services that published to the uh, sample server. This is the public server that you can access. And also we have uh, additional Document, document on scientific data workflow that how you create your mosaic data set and publish in the service from different type of uh, data. And uh, we uh, and thank you for coming. Then we are here for any questions you will have. Thanks.